Hello everyone, it's Cliff, back with uh, part 3 of the Dell Precision T5600 series. This time we'll be doing some gaming, finally. <laughs> the games I've chosen are Halo Infinite, Doom Eternal, Battlefield 2042, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we'll be playing Warzone, and Fortnite. Uh, on this machine, I have updated all the drivers, gotten Windows installed already, and I also upped the fan speed. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it's a little bit louder. Um, the auto speed was not ramping it up during gaming, because I've already tested all the games played or that we will play, uh, and the system was just kind of at, stuck at low, so the CPU was not tur turboing up enough, so we weren't getting the full performance. Out of all the games here, if you want a quick synopsis, uh, they were all basically playable, uh, except for Battlefield. Battlefield was probably the worst of the bunch. It, de it did run around 30 to 40 FPS, but it was very choppy. Um, maybe that would be fixed with further optimizations. We both know the, or we all know that the game is... Uh, in an interesting state at launch right now. I probably should have refunded it, but I'm having fun with it, kind of. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get the camera mounted in the tripod. I have my um, speaker set up so I can listen to some sound of the games. And we'll go start with Halo Infinite and see if these old Sandy Bridge EPs, uh, Zeons, can keep up in gaming in 2021. Basically, 2022. So, let me go ahead and start up the first game. So here's our first game on the list. It's Halo Infinite. Uh, luckily, the Xeon CPUs support AVX, so we can obviously play most of the current games uh, until I start requiring AVX too, but hopefully that's a little while from now. Uh, as you can see, I have Ribatuna statistics running, and I will be using my controller to play because uh, it will be difficult to play with the, <laughs> the tripod right in front of me. Uh, we got a whole ton of CPU cores going. It's because obviously we had 24 th total threads. And let's just check out settings. So we are running this at, on our 1066 gig with a resolution scale of 75%. Uh, V-Sync is enabled. I can turn it off, but uh, it gets a little choppy if I do. And a blend of medium and high settings. Uh, you could also turn this up down to 1080p and complete, uh, full 1080p render scale and with low settings, and it will be fine. So let me hop into a game. Okay, here we are in a bot game of Halo Infinite. I believe this is the Bizarre map. And as you can see, we're getting a pretty consistent 60 FPS. And this is definitely a playable and enjoyable experience. I'll just play a little bit, and you guys can get an image of what's going on. As you can see, our GPU is getting pretty hot in the 80 degrees, and uh, our CPUs are all turboing to about 3.2 gigahertz, and it's being pretty well used by uh, the game. Almost all the cores and all the threads are being somewhat utilized, and this is actually not a bad system to play this game on, which I'm kind of surprised. Okay, I think that's a pretty good description of what the gameplay will be. I mean, obviously, it might be a little bit uh, different in big team battle, but um, as in at least the four v four mode of bots, it's. I mean, this is fine as you can tell. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the next game. Let's try out Battlefield 2042 next. Okay, here we are in Battlefield 2042, and we are running this at 1080p. And mainly low settings, I turn off motion blur. Basically almost anything I get turned off, I turn to low. Or I put it on low auto and then just turn everything down. Um, the dynamic resolution scale is on. I set it to 50%. It gives you an extra about 10 FPS. So you could average around 40 FPS. It's definitely not the best, but it is at least playable. Let me hop into a game and you guys can see. Okay, we load into a game on Manifest. Uh, this is a Conclave's large map. As you can see, we're kind of averaging between 30 to 40 FPS, but it's really choppy and we get a ton of black spikes. So, but it is kind of playable at least, so. Fortunately, this is the start of the game, so I might not see any action right away. But this gives you at least an idea of what it's like. I believe we're definitely a CPU bottleneck here as our GPU is only hitting about 60 to 70 percent utilization. So, so really turning down the video settings anymore won't lead to any uh, appreciable uh, gain in FPS, mainly because uh, the CPUs are what's holding us back right now. 
But still, this is what I would consider playable. I mean, it's definitely not optimal, but in 2021, when you can't get anything these days in terms of computer components, uh, I mean, this is fine. So go ahead and see if we can get to a objective at least. We'll walk all this distance just to die. It's actually it's actually increased to about 50 FPS, at some point, almost 50 FPS at some points. So it's not, not too bad. It's really when I start firing, or if I'm in a vehicle or something, when it really starts to tank, I believe. But still, considering the age of the hardware, it's nice to know that this game, a brand new game, is, is playable. So. Let's see, drive quad. There's a horn button. Oops. Sorry, I'm playing on my controller. I don't know all the controls fully, so. Look at that. This is Battlefield driving right now. This is, you know what? <laughs> well, Alright, well. That was a good first life. Let's see if I can respawn in somewhere where there's actually action going on. Okay, B2. Alright, I know my respawn timer is active, but let me spawn in the objective. Okay, here we go. Let's see who's in the bushes. Alright, one more life. Let's see if I can at least get killed before I switch over to the next game. But, like I was saying before, I mean, definitely could play on this. I don't know if you want to. Well, I mean, I guess if you had to, it's fine. Weirdly enough, the, the game is only utilizing half of the threads, as you can see. The other half are basically untouched. I don't know if that's a game ish engine issue or, or what, but... Oh yeah, I forgot it. It's a rocket launcher. That's what I'm looking for. Grenades. Oh, I'm hitting something. Just lay down the trigger, you know? There we go. Oh, it's a Boston Dynamics dog. I mean, this game does have its flaws, but I still do find it fun at least, so. Uh, I don't know if I would have paid $60, but eh, hopefully they patch it. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next game. Uh, let's go uh, Doom Eternal. So, I'll see you in the next clip. And here we are in Doom Eternal. Again, this is running at 1080p, native. Uh, I have uh, motion blur off. I have the render mode at full scale, and we are at a mix of high to medium settings. And um, this game gets it pretty good, average about 60 FPS. So let me, I don't think I have to cut here, I think I could just load right into a game. So This is a very well optimized game, uh, it uses all the cores and threads very well. and uh, it, It's definitely a fun game to play, and it is fun playing the system. So let's go ahead and see how it performs on these old Xeon uh, Sandy Bridge Bay EPs. Alright, one thing, I, I do not know the controls uh, on a controller, so... I mean, I slightly do, but... We're getting a solid 60... Oops, I'll have to play down. Getting a solid 60 to 70 FPS. Oh, not ammo. For this epic gameplay right here. I gotta pick up some ammo. I mean, you could also turn down the settings and get a much more smoother FPS, but this is not bad. I'm still shooting me. Yeah, this is a game I play almost exclusively with mouse and keyboard, so. But if you haven't played this game, I highly recommend check it out, so. I'll turn that sound down a little bit. Okay. All 
Weak point, Arachnatron. Dismiss. Something wrong with the sound, though. I don't know. I can't tell if this is a game or the the computer. So as you can see, uh, another game that's definitely well playable in this system. Uh, let's go in the next game. Let's play some Call of Duty Warzone. And now we're in Call of Duty Warzone. Again, we're running this at 1080p and a render scale of 100. Oh, this is actually at 1200p. Let's see if I can... Uh, you know what? I'll leave it as 1200p. But I was originally running this at 1080p with 100% uh, resolution scaling. And we're running basically normal to low settings. A lot of the, you know, more niche features disabled, like I can't stand things like film grain or motion blur. So, um, okay, let me go ahead and hop into a solos game. Let me make sure I'm in a solos match. Yeah, don't fill. And uh, let me get to a Warzone match. Okay, we loaded into, I guess this is the uh, pre-game lobby. This will do it at least. Um, Someone's shooting. But we're getting a solid 60 to 70 FPS with those settings. And it's a pretty pretty good night experience. So, oh, can I round line on this roof? Yeah, nice. Definitely playable. You can definitely tweak these settings. Get a uh, better performance if you want. Better graphics fidelity. Right now we're at about 60 FPS. I can find somebody. Everyone's out over here, I believe. Oh, yeah, there they are. This is. Oh, now we're loading an actual game. Getting a little bit of tearing. I think this is a V-Sync issue. I can enable V-Sync, it'll probably go away. Promodon West. Let's just go land there. See if I can get myself killed. Oh, I jump. Oh, okay. Just go straight down. What's the minimum I can deploy my parachute in this game? I don't know. Just try not to snack, smack into the ground at least. Oops, maybe that was a little bit too, too soon. Yeah, I'm gonna go find someone to fight. Where is that anyway? Did no one land here? So I'll just go pick up. I haven't played this game in a long time, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, pick up this, pick up this please. Thank you. Oh, an axe. Nice. I didn't know that was in Modern Warfare, you know. Oh, I'm gonna just go find someone to go get killed by. Burger Town. Oh, I see someone up ahead. Come on, my battle axe. Yeah. Interesting sound. Oh, come on, where is everybody? I thought it was supposed to be a battle royale, not just a walk around royale, you know? Maybe I dropped in the wrong spot. Oop. Bad eyes. What's this? Oop, no, I want a bad eye. Armor satchel.
surprised I've not died yet. Alright, there we go. This is what I'm looking for. Oh no, my battle axe. It didn't do well against someone with a shotgun with flame rounds. <laughs> okay. Let's go into. Oh, the gulag. I forgot about this. Uh, let me go ahead and just see if I can beat someone up. Uh, punch, 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 punch. Oh, and this is a loading, right? Interactive gameplay right here. Oh, at least I'm getting good FPS while doing this. Let's see, can I win the 1v1? Probably not. Alright, I'll just run at him. Oh, oh, where you at? Uh, <laughs> that's how good I am in this game. Alright, so let's go ahead and play our last game, Fortnite, and then we'll call it a video. And for our last game of our test suite, uh, it's every Zoomer's favorite game, uh, Fortnite. Uh, we are playing this at 1080p for 100% render scale with the high preset set. And uh, we go ahead and just hop into a lobby. We make sure I'm on solo and we go to play. This should be relatively quick. I don't think I should have to cut this either. So, yeah, six seconds should at least get us into a, um, a pre match lobby. And I uh, can see the performance there. And also the loading times, too, as well. With me doing these cuts, you don't see how long it takes to load into the games. All the games are running off the discs, actually, and not the solid state drive. So, um, but these are 10K uh, SAS drives, so they're a little bit faster. But you see, that was a pretty quick load. And as you can imagine, if all the other games are playable, this game is definitely playable too. So, I have no issues playing this game. Was that Naruto? What is he doing here? Naruto? That's Spider Man. What what is going on? There's people in wheelchairs and there's so much there's Naruto on the balloon. I don't, know, I don't get kids these days. Right, I'm gonna just dump to my death. Back in my days we had tilted towers, you know, everything was great. Now look at it. Pink goo all over the map. See, is there anyone landing near me? Yeah, there's one guy. Hopefully he kills me. So I can end this. Okay, let me just follow him. Can I follow him? Where is, where is he? This guy's got like a surfboard thing. I'm losing him. Let me go grab that gun. Ooh, fastest gunslinger in the West. I'm a pro Fortnite player. What was this? Surprised I didn't die. It's kind of shocking. Oh, what is that? Was it gold? I see gold. What is that? I've played this game so long, I don't know what anything does. Oops. What was that? Uh, what is that, a robot? I don't get it. What is this? Someone explain. Nice. I got killed by the AI. So. <laughs> okay, let me cut it here. I'm going to go in and give my final, um, uh, I guess, thoughts on the system. And we'll wrap this series up. My concluding thoughts on the Dell Precision T5600. It's a pretty good system. Uh, Sandy Bridge EP still holds up very well to this day. Uh, my main reasoning for that is PCIe Gen 3. 
Um, there's tons of expansion slots, so you could add things if you need, like even an NVMe drive, although you won't be able to boot off of it. You could add multiple USB 3.0 cards if you need it, like 3.1, 3.2, Gen 2 by 2 whatever nonsense name they're using these days. There's still SATA 3 on the motherboard, so it's still relatively new. Oh, yeah, and also CPUs have um, the ABS instruction set, which is very important for, you know, at least being able to launch modern games. So I give a system like this uh, another probably four to five years of usability, assuming you could get some of the higher clocked uh, CPUs and you're not just going for most raw FPS and gaming. You'll need, obviously, faster CPUs for that. But say if you got even the higher clocked or the Ivy Bridge model of this, the T5610, and you got the higher clock uh, Ivy Bridge CPUs, you'd, you'd still get a pretty good uh, gaming experience. But obviously with Windows 11 dropping support, official support, you could still run Windows 11 on this, but uh, Windows 11 dropping official support for uh, systems without secure boot, UFI and a TPM version 2.0, and also the older processors, although it's a bunch of bullshit. But um, I'd say you could definitely use the system until 2025. Yeah, easy. Uh, things that I would upgrade in here, not much. I feel like the GPU is pretty well balanced. So I'd stick with a 1060 class or lower. Uh, you're really going to be CPU bottlenecked by the low clocks here. Uh, if you were to find maybe a faster CPUs, you could you could just drop the core count down and get some higher frequency, and then you could pair it with something maybe like a 1070. Uh, I don't think a 1080 would be worth it. I think you 100% be bottlenecked there. But Overall, uh, for a free system, I mean, if you could get a GPU, um, which is the big question, uh, this is a very good computer. It's, I mean, it's still great as a everyday computer and as a workstation, and you could do some light gaming on it. So um, that's going to be it for this video. And until next time, I will see you guys then. Make sure not to like, not to comment, and not to subscribe. All right. Later.